you're anything like me and you've been obsessed with Neil Vim, then maybe you decide enough is enough and it's time to create my own config. With all the options, it can seem like a kid in the candy store stuck with choice paralysis. So this is why I spent the last two weeks looking for some of the best Neil Vim plugins out there and the ones in this video are the what I've settled upon. From utility plugins to debugging, a general workflow and navigation improvements. There is something that everyone can take from this video and add it to your config or even just copy mine. These plugins will be especially useful if you're looking to switch from your favorite ID, such as JetBrains or Visual Code, and switching over to NeoVim. So make sure to stay tuned. So, like I said, this is used to replace your like, Visual Studio Code, JetBrains, those type of things. And so, this is what it looks like. Come in here, installation, copy these depending on what system you're on. And then file structure this is very important. This is how I set mine up. Config and Vim Lua set that and set up a folder called config and then create these files. I like having this stuff. Well I kinda I'll show you I kinda diff they're a little bit different from this, but for the most part this is how I have mine set up. And then as far as plugins go. The reason I say Lazy Vim is so nice and I highly recommend it or is necessary for this specifically following along with this video because all the stuff out of the box it gives you to make it already feel like an ID. Got coding, auto pairs, comments, better text objects, color scheme, editor, formatting, linting, all that good stuff. And, uh, Plugins I address today will just add on top of some of these, making them function better, allowing you to add better key binds instead of the ones that come out of the box. First on the list is Harpoon. And there's this is actually the second version of it. And so if you actually click on the first one, which is the outdated one, there will be a link that links you to the correct one. Essentially what Harpoon does is it, allows you to add files to a list and you can have key binds to quickly switch to it and so here's the installation make sure it's harpoon 2 and let me show you this setup so come down to my config so you just copy this code and or i will link a link to my config file you can just copy and paste it and so for my key maps, I have leader key plus A. And for me, leader key is space. This is very important. Make sure you add this right here, add file to Harpoon. Because if I come here, press my leader key, which pulls this up. You can see right here, add a file to Harpoon. Otherwise, this will just be blank. It'll say A, and you might get confused on what it is. So make sure you add the description on there. And then there's key maps to switch between the four. You can add more than four. And so if you go past four, you use these key binds here. But well, most time I have just four files open on my harpoon at least. So I'm gonna pull up this and I'm gonna add these files to my harpoon. So I'm gonna come here and add this one. You see how like I would normally have to do this. I come here and click on it. Basically this solves that because I add all these files to it. Then I can press Control E, and now I can come here, and I can even just click on it instead. Like if that's more more comfortable for you, do that. Control E, click on it. It's definitely a lot faster than coming here, having to open up folders and all that, and use this to swap between them. And actually, if you well, to keep your hand on the keyboard at all times. Next is Vim Fugitive, made by Tim Pope also known as Tim Pope, the godfather of Vim plugins. So essentially what fugitive.vim is, is a Git wrapper. If you're not sure what a wrapper is, basically a wrapper is a the same thing as whatever it is, but a different implementation of it. Often an improvement or allow you to do something that you're normally not allowed to do with that said thing. And so with this, 
it takes the git that you type in the command line, the raw you see, and it allows you to have an improved, easier time working with it. Instead of having going through all those prompts, like it says here, going through prompts, press enter, type command to continue. It, it's a quiet command. It, like, it just, he had all, has all the programming in the background. You just type one command and it can do multiple things. Like if I were to come and read all this stuff, these do a lot than what normally would do if you just type it in the regular way. And it saves you time for having to type in the entire thing. You just come here and type git or whatever you want to do. But like I said, I'm not too familiar with it yet. So I will link a video in the description by DevOps Toolbox, I believe his name is. And he has a very good video that explains it way better than I could do. So on to the next one. Next is NVIM Surround. NVIM Surround allows you to surround selections in a very intuitive way, the NVIM way. So if I come here and here are NVIM Surround use cases. So these are the key binds that are set. Now you just want to get used to. So YS, and then you type the motion in the character for adding something. CS, the old character and the new character to change it, and DS character to delete a character. And so if I come here and I cover it up here, I want to surround this as a quote. I would do YSIW quotes. And one thing to note, you have to do it pretty quickly. Because if I just come in here and type Y, S, I, W, it yanks it instead. Because you're telling us it yank inside of the word. But if you type it all pretty much in one motion, that allows you to use NVIM surround correctly instead of just using NVIM. Or not NVIM. Whenever you use this, so I come in here and put Y. That's just, that is, and what is yank? Like, like when I come here using which key, that's yank. But having those system plays with YSCS, DS, that basically allows T Pope to, or not T Pope, but the creative of this to overwrite that as a starting one, and then you can add on top of it. Just a quick thing. You'll understand that more as, as you use it. And so I come here change it to single quotes and so change from these quotes to single quotes so just having cs double quotes single quote old one new one and then come here delete surrounded quotes all you type is ds and surrounded quotes and this last one you actually don't need to be in visual mode but you can be. So right, I say I press V, go visual mode, and I press capital S. Now you see all these selections I can make. I can select the sentence, which is already selected, but just to confirm it, I can press C to capture the line above it, or I can press D to capture the entire file. I press D, there we go. Super quick, super nice and efficient. But like I said, you can also just do a normal mode. So you just capital S and see. And I would actually recommend that way because it's a lot quicker. There's one less action. One more thing. Come in here and type H NVIM surround dot usage and that pulls up the help page for NVIM surround. You kind of see some of the same things. So like old text, type in the command, gives you new text use cases, a lot of like how exactly everything works, super nice, some more mappings and all that good stuff. And for the final plugin, it is mini.nvim, basically a library of 40 plus independent Lua modules to improve overall NeoVim experience. And like one of the other ones, it is made by Eka Novisky.
he essentially just makes a bunch of NeoVim plugins, and this, all the plugins in here are made by him, which is really nice. Uh, they're all are meant to work really well together. And so this is how you install it. And so you can see like some of these are even used in LazyVim. Like mini.peers, mini.ai. Like a lot of these, it's cool. I like how here it breaks it down. So you can, okay, I want some text editor. I want general workflow, appearance. It's really nice. And again, this is one I haven't, use too much like i just installed this earlier today but i've seen it and i was like okay there's definitely some of these i want to try out and so i will for sure be adding some of these and then testing them out in the future you'll see them in future videos but for this video case i essentially just you could do also do this i just ask claude how to use it and then I told it to show me how, how to install the most popular ones. And so it came with this. So essentially, you install the same way you would install mini. Type the URL. And then either way, just come in here and copy and paste it. And once you do that, you're ready to do it. And like I said, it comes here, mini.basics, mini.files. You can pick whichever one you want. And you can gradually put them in there. So you, can, you don't want to just add... 10 50 different things and not know what they do right and then obviously if you already have some like mini surround or app in vim dot surround if i wanted to use this i would have to either comment out or just delete in vim dot surround but yeah this is something i'm definitely looking into using and like i said i will have the config in the description for now, I think we got to just make it a file where you can copy and paste it. And then very soon I will have a GitHub repository that you can check in on and make sure and copy and paste basically. It's just my updated version. Stay up to date with what I'm doing, my configs. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.